Hey guys, Buildzoid here, and today we're going to be taking a look at some basic uh, memory timings for single rank Hynix uh, DDR5 memory setups with Ryzen 7000. So the system specs for what the system I'm showing this on is uh, the following Ryzen 970 950X on an Asus Strix B650E uh, Dash F gaming Wi-Fi motherboard. Thank you Asus for providing the motherboard for testing. And then the memory kit is uh, Hynix uh, is using Hynix 16 gigabit ADI memory chips and uh, they're 16 gig DIMMs, so they're single. So it's a single rank configuration. Um, and uh, I've also tested these timings with MDI. So and I've also tested these timings across a variety of different motherboards and different CPUs. So this this is basically like. Th these timings aren't the tightest, um, they're not like the absolute peak of what you can do in terms of Ryzen 7000 memory performance. However, they are what I would consider like an expo profile. The, the funny thing is you can't actually implement the timings I have here as an expo profile because expo profiles are not long enough that you could fit that many timings in them. But uh, yeah, um, if you know, expo profiles didn't have all the exact same limitations that XMP profiles had, then this would be my take on an expo profile. Like, the idea behind these timings is that if you are going to use them, you should still run a memory stress test, but I think it is very unlikely that you're going to run into any instability with these. So, um, let's get into it. So, here's the... Oh, and as you can see, I've done all of the testing without a fan on the memory, though it is worth noting I do use an open-air test bench, so if you have, like, a hot, power-hungry GPU inside a badly ventilated case, uh, that c could be a bit of an issue. Um, yeah, if you're gonna, like, so if you're gonna actually use these timings, you should probably run a GPU stress test at the same time as one of, as, as your memory stress test, if you have a case. Um, if you're on an open air test bench, you don't need to worry about those things. Or if you have a case where somehow the memory doesn't get cooked by the GPU, which I'm not sure that exists, uh, you also wouldn't have to worry about that. But yeah, anyway, that, that is something to watch out for because, uh, I, I've seen quite a few cases of people like saying that, oh, I overclocked my memory, ran all the stress tests. And then like after an hour of playing some uh, GPU heavy game, the system just crashes and it's like, yeah, it's probably because your GPU just cooked the memory. Um, so yeah, like that, that's something to keep in mind with memory overclocking. So anyway, here we are, uh, with the stress tests. And so as you can see, I've run test mem five. Uh, I've also run three hours of, uh, base. Yeah. Three hours of like Y cruncher over here. And, uh, actually almost three and a half hour. Yeah. Like over three hours of Y cruncher. Um, which is just a very good general stress test. It hits the CPU really hard, memory controller really hard, memory really hard. Uh, and then I've also run like 2000% of HCI Memtest Pro. So uh, yeah, and I've run these, sim like I've done similar stress tests with ASRock boards, Gigabyte boards, a Ryzen 7600X, a 7900X. Um, th this should work basically everywhere. I've also tested this across multiple different memory kits. Um, of various Hynix, well, yeah, multiple different memory kits of Hynix, MDI, and uh, ADI. So anyway, uh, let's restart and uh, take a look at these timings. So one of the other things to sort of keep in mind with Ryzen memory overclocking, at least for Ryzen 7000 right now, is that I have run into issues with uh, the system skipping memory training and then not being able to initialize the memory. Um, so I would strongly recommend that you disable fast boot and force the system to retrain the memory settings every single time because while it does add uh, a delay to your, your boot up time, uh, it's better than having a system where it just stops posting until you power cycle the power supply, uh, which is what tends to happen if you do skip the memory training in my experience. Um, it doesn't happen always, but every so often it'll just kind of like fail to initialize the memory if you don't go through the memory training. So, um, yeah, and on, on Asus boards, um, that's just in the boot configuration here, and I, I just have fast boot disable. Um, so, anyway, let's go over these settings. You might be wondering about why my uh, Infinity Fabric is at 2033 instead of 2000, and there's a very simple reason for that. Um, one, the Infinity Fabric on Ryzen 7000 is permanently desynchronized from the memory controller because the memory controller runs at 3 gigahertz or higher, 
well, I guess if you were using DDR5 like 4800, your memory controller would be running at 2.4 gigahertz. But the point is, the memory controller runs at very high frequencies. And the Infinity Fabric doesn't. The Infinity Fabric basically... Like, I don't have a single CPU here that is able to do more than 2133 on the Infinity Fabric. Therefore, it is entirely p impossible for a synchronous transition of data from the memory controller, which is running, you know, like 3 gigahertz, to the Infinity Fabric, which is running at 2 gigahertz. Because 2 and 3 are not a ratio that divides without, like, fractions, right? Um, so, yeah, um, the, the Infinity Fabric on Ryzen 7000 is permanently desynchronized. Um, and the reason why we're at 2033 and not like 2067 or 2100 is because the Infinity Fabric also has some weird sweet spot effect, especially at DDR5-6000, it's like very pronounced, um, where like 2067 and 2100 are both, and even 2133, like all of these speeds are faster than 2000. However, 2033 is faster than, than all of them for some reason. I have no idea why this happens. It doesn't make any sense. It doesn't happen at 6200 in my testing, though that might just be because none of my CPUs are able to go over 2133 and maybe the effect kicks in uh, at a higher infinity fabric speed at the higher memory ratios. But at least at 6000, like peak performance is with 2033 infinity fabric. I don't know why, it, it just is. Um, and I've run into this with multiple motherboards, multiple CPUs. It's kind of the reason I've been delaying, uh, like, pre re releasing any content about, like, Infinity Fabric tuning on Ryzen 7000 is just, like, weird effects like this being, like, I don't really know how to ex like, I don't know why it happens. Straight up, no idea. But every board, every BIOS, every CPU I've tried at DDR5-6000... 2033 Infinity Fabric is just faster than 2067 or 2100 or 2000 or any other Infinity Fabric ratio that'll run. So, um, yeah, um, it's not a big difference, but it is a measurable difference and it is consistent. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, if you don't believe me, you can just run it at 2000 megahertz. It doesn't really make that much of a difference, right? But, um... Yeah, if you want that little bit lower latency and a little bit more memory bandwidth, 2033 at DDR5-6000 is optimal, which is super weird, but it's like it happens on every single system I've tested, so it seems to just be a thing. Um, anyway, um, we're at DDR5-6000. Every single CPU I've tried can do 6000 easily. Um, it really, like, the memory controller on Ryzen 7000, like, starts having issues once you want to go past, like, 6200. Anyway, um, let's keep going down through the settings. Uh, for voltages, nothing very, ex nothing particularly extreme here. Um, so 1.25 volts on the SOC, which is a little bit high for just DDR5-6000, but I want to account for, like, really, really bad CPUs. Um, so that's why. Uh, also, for the SOC voltage, up to 1.4 volts is safe, from what I've been told. And if you have some of the more, like, higher... Well, if you're pushing higher memory speeds, like, say, 6200 or PATH 6200, uh, with some CPUs, you do need an absolute ton of SOC voltage. Um, but yeah, DDR5-6000, it's really not necessary. Um, but yeah, so we're, we're just using 1.25 volts here. Then for CPU VDDIO, uh, so this is the memory controller power. This is just at 1.35 volts because my memory voltage and, well, yeah, v memory VDD and memory VDDQ are also at 1.35 volts. Uh, it is entirely possible that the timings that I'm about to show you would work at lower voltages. I've just not tested them at lower voltages. They definitely also work at 1.4 volts, but uh, yeah. Um, I don't know if they would work at 1.3. I think they probably will. Um, most of the secondary timings, because the, the point of this video is the secondary timings. It's not the not the primary timings, um, which is why I have the primary timings set relatively loose here. The thing is, I don't actually have any Expo memory kits, which is kind of annoying, but yeah, I don't have any Expo memory kits. Um, and so, yeah, um, I just sort of went with like, I'm pretty sure there are some kits that come with like a 3200, uh, 32, 40, 40, uh, 6000, uh, Expo profile. 
basically for the primaries, just use whatever your memory kit comes with, is, is my point. Like your my primary timings, you can just ignore them. So like TCL, TRCD, TRP, you can just ignore what I have and just use whatever your memory kit comes with because these three timings are sort of where most of the variance in chip quality shows up. And so this is the part where like, you can't just copy somebody else's TRCD setting. Um, Cause a lot of the time that won't necessarily work. Um, Anyway, so for TRAS, just set that to 28, and TRAS, that, that is one of the ones you do have to adjust because the default XMP setting or Expo setting for that is really loose for really no good reason. So, yeah, anyway, let's go through. So TRC at 68, um, it is possible to go somewhat lower than that, but it doesn't really improve performance much, and if you go too far down, it eventually does cause instability. TWR at 48. As far as I know, the limit for the memory controller on Ryzen for TWR is just straight up 48, so you can't go below that. Um, TR, uh, we do have access to refresh interval uh, with Ryzen 7000. Uh, I, here I have it set to 50,000, um, and the reason I have it set to 50,000 is because 50,000 is way faster than the default refresh interval setting, which I believe is around 10,000 at 6,000 uh, 6, megabits per second. But... Uh, um, 50,000 is more, like, more temperature resistant than the actual maximum refresh interval setting, which is 65,535. Basically, if you have terrible memory cooling, 50,000 should not have any issues, whereas 65,000 might. So, that's why I've gone with 50,000 here instead of straight up 65,000. And the performance difference between 50,000 and 65,000 isn't that big. Right, because when you go from 10,000-ish to 50,000, you're delaying the refresh. Like, there's five times fewer refreshes in a given amount of time. Whereas when you go from 50,000 to 65,000, you're only delaying another refresh by, like, less than 50%. So it really doesn't make that much of a performance difference. Um, anyway, for the actual refresh cycle settings, we're at 500, 400, 300. Um, on Hynix MDI based sticks, you can actually push these potentially lower, especially like TRFC2 and, and same bank. But um, yeah, this works on MDI, ADI, um, and really shouldn't cause any issues across a very large variety of memory kits. Uh, RTPs at 12, this is again, a, well, this is a limitation of ADI. MDI can go lower, but it's not really going to make a huge difference because it's not that it can, can't go that much lower. Anyway, so TRTP is a, uh, RTP is at 12, TRDL is at 8, uh, ADI especially, AD, well, especially this kit of ADI really, really sucks at TRDL for some reason. Um, so, yeah, that, that's just kind of like, set it to 8. Um, TRDS can be at 4, um, and TFAW is at 20, um, which, as far as I know, is a limitation of the Ryzen memory controller. Funnily enough, some motherboards will actually set, allow you to set TFAW values that the memory controller will straight up just ignore. Um, and so that, that's why I have it manually set to 20. Because as far as I know, that's actually where the Ryzen memory controller stops for, the, for this timing. And I'm not entirely certain what it would do if you punch in values that are lower than that. Anyway, TWTRL, uh, we've got 16. And write to read short, we've got 6. Um, which, yeah, that's just kind of that. Uh, and then for the read-to-read -read timings, uh, we, well, read-to-read -read SCL, which is, like, same bank group. I really wish AMD used, like, Intel naming conventions, because Intel naming conventions for timings are just better, but... Actually, I don't think even... I don't think this... I'm pretty sure this naming convention is AMD's own original creation, the SCL thing. Because I'm pretty sure even the official, like, DDR documentation from JDEC uses same group and different group for the, the tertiary timings. But, well, that doesn't matter. Um, but read-to-read, -read, you can't set it any lower than 4. Uh, and write-to-write, -write, you can't set it any lower than 4. SC is just at 1. It doesn't go any lower than that. Um, then for write-to-read delay, we've got 2. And read-to-write -write delay, it's on 16. The SD and DD timings, like these two over here, as well as SD and DD over here, uh, and... Oh, that's that's all of them. The, yeah, so the SD and DD timings are all set to auto, because this is a single rank memory configuration, and SD stands for same DIM, so it's a different rank on the same DIM. 
Again, I wish AMD just used the Intel naming convention because the Intel naming convention is different rank and then different dim. Um, but you know, like, I, why why would you make why would you use a naming convention that makes sense when you can come up with an original naming convention that only technically makes sense? But anyway, since these memory sticks are single rank, while well, there isn't a different rank on the same dim, so we don't need to worry about the same dim timing and we can leave it on auto. And then for the different dim timing, uh, well, there isn't a different dim, right? On, on each of the memory channels, there's only one memory stick, so there isn't a different dim, therefore we do not need to worry about the different dim timing either, and that can be left on auto as well. And, and that's really it. Like, uh, so, yeah. Other than that, the only other adjustment is make sure your motherboard is on UCLK equals MemCLK. Absolutely every single Ryzen 7000 CPU should be able to do 3 gigahertz memory controller clock, so that's really no problem. And then you want to disable power down, which uh, is a... It's like a warm idle state for the memory. Um, it's, it's, not, it's not actual idle, it's like warm idle basically it just turns off the data data queue for a little or turns out like the turns off the like output drivers of the memory stick without actually powering down the memory stick it's, it's this weird like power saving thing that i guess makes sense in like low power devices like laptops and maybe phones on desktops it doesn't do anything ram really doesn't pull that much power in the first place so uh yeah and this does add some latency um, because going from power down to, like, not in power down, there's a delay in that. So you want to disable the power down mode, um, so that you don't have to, like, wake up the memory sticks every so often. Um, and that's basically it. Um, that, that's all there is. So basically just ignore my TCL, TRCD, TRP timings. Just use whatever your memory kit came with. Uh, and then for TRAS, use 28. And then all of the other timings, literally just copy them. Like, th these, these timings, I've tested them across... Well, as long as you have Hynix memory. If you don't have Hynix memory and you copy these settings, your system probably won't post. That way you will know that you do not have Hynix memory. Um, th that's the fun thing, is like, are you not... Sh if you have Samsung memory and or Micron memory and you're not sure about it, well, you can try punch in Hynix settings, and if it doesn't post, well, you ain't got Hynix memory, right? Like, that's it's quite quite a simple way of figuring out that out uh, instead of like on some memory kits you can figure out from like the label if they're Hynix or not but you can also just punch in settings that don't work on other memory chips and that that'll tell you the same information in a, uh, a in a somewhat more practical way um, anyway um, yeah and then for voltages I'm just using 1.35 but if you have one of those memory kits that has a expo profile or XMP profile that's like 1.4 volts these exact same timings will work just fine. Um, I originally actually shot a version of this video at 1.4 volts, and then I decided to retune it at 1.35 just in case, like just for people who have like less high voltage uh, memory profiles to begin with. So um, I wouldn't even be surprised if these settings also worked at 1.3 volts. I've just not been bothered to test that, and I'm I'm not going to bother to test that at this point. So yeah, that that's it for the video, and this will be, a, like, these settings are way faster than XMP. Like, I can pretty much guarantee that. There's, there's or Expo, it, it doesn't matter. Like, both Expo and XMP are basically the same thing with different names and all of the same uh, limitations and shortcomings. Um, so, yeah, anyway, hopefully this is somewhat helpful. Also, yes, you can use these timings as a starting point for further memory optimization, uh, though... Yeah, like, the, these are a decent starting point if you have Hynix memory sticks. I can't really think of any immediate issues. You might have to loosen out the TRFC if you want to push the memory clock significantly higher, but other than that, you really shouldn't run into any issues with these. So, yeah, that's it for the video. Thank you for watching. Uh, like, share, subscribe, leave any comments, questions, suggestions down in the comment section below. If you'd like to support, uh, support what I do here with actually hardcore overclocking, I have a Patreon there's a link to that down in the description below. There's also the AHOC Teespring store where you can pick up shirts, hoodies, posters, you know, the usual YouTuber merch. And I've also got a band camp um, if you like industrial metal noise stuff um, that exists. There's, there's a link to that down in the description below as well. And that's it for the video. So thank you for watching and goodbye. <laughs>